You may have never heard of Shein, but it is the most talked about online fashion retailer on YouTube and TikTok. They really push the whole fast fashion model to almost its extreme. So Shein is currently the largest fast fashion retailer and the most visited fashion and apparel site in the world. It's done something that Chinese companies have typically failed to do, make a globally recognizable brand. In just a few years, the Chinese brand has become a one-stop shop for impossibly cheap and decent quality women's apparel. Every day, over 5,000 new items appear on their site, and an army of influencers, as well as high-profile celebrities such as Katy Perry and Lil Nas X, have joined the Xi'an ecosystem. Last year, it sold nearly 10 billion worth of apparel, which is nearly half of the leader Indidex, Zara's parent company. But here lies the irony. Even as Xi'an has taken off among Gen Zers in the fashion industry, the brand is practically a black box for media and investors. Xi'an is generally said to be worth over 15 billion. But after its latest funding round, a Chinese tech blog reported the company to be worth around 46 billion, which is roughly the valuation of eBay. However, the article was promptly wiped from all Chinese media sites at the company's behest. A representative of the company also reached out to us to tell us the number is wrong, but declined to provide an alternative number. Xi'an refuses to publicize its investors, but we know that industry veterans like Jafco Asia and IDG Capital, along with private equity titans Sequoia and Tiger Global, are all confirmed backers. Yet none have come forward about the company. But what really is Xi'an? And who's behind it? Xi'an's founder, Xu Yantian, is an expert in search engine optimization and exports. After a brief stint running his own IT business, he decided to try his luck at his own export venture, picking a domain name that he found decent success with on a search page, SheInside.com. In 2012, Xu began selling all types of women's apparel. But back then, SheInside.com was still just an online platform. There was no factory and no inventory. The team uploaded pictures of whatever designs they could find, waited for orders to pile up on their site, then bought them wholesale. At the same time, China's e-commerce market was in full throttle. Alibaba had listed on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange in 2007, and had just recently launched Taobao Mall, or T-Mall, which is close to China's version of Amazon's marketplace. Xu's SEO strategy had been working. He was receiving a heavy influx of orders and was struggling to fill them. And in his successful attempt to stand out on a Google search page, he realized he was doing something that no Chinese company in the early 2000s could have possibly fathomed. He was developing a global brand. In 2015, Xu shortened the company name to Xi'an. He hired designers, he placed his own factory orders, and built up his own clothing and production line. And in the process, he came up with something really novel. You see, in the past, fashion designers would mull over how customers would react to a design before pushing it out. A hit or miss exercise. By contrast, companies like Xi'an are flipping the script. They push anything and everything out, then analyze the buying patterns to tailor their subsequent products. In China, this strategy actually already exists. In the e-commerce sector, it's known as the consumer to manufacture model, as popularized by retail giant Pinduoduo. C2M for short removes the guesswork of doing business, and it leads to this virtuous cycle that ultimately makes business more efficient. Xi'an's geographic location also helps buttress its C2M strategy. Besides its headquarters in Nanjing, the company also has an office in Guangzhou, the southern industrial hub known for its garment manufacturing. Proximity to the industrial heartland allows Xi'an to spot trends and source them faster than most of their overseas competitors. But the company's tactic of flooding the market with heaps of new products at rock-bottom prices is not without risk. For the past few years, the Chinese company has been accused of cultural insensitivity and allegedly unethical practices. In 2020, the retailer landed in hot water for hawking Islamic prayer mats, labeled as fringe trim or tassel trim Greek carpets on its website. After being called out by Novella Noor, an American Muslim fashion influencer and inclusivity activist, Xi'an swiftly removed the rug from its site and apologized for what it described as, quote, a serious mistake. But days after the rug blunder, Xi'an stoked outrage again for selling a pendant necklace that appeared to be in the shape of a swastika. Facing an avalanche of criticism for promoting anti-Semitism, the brand said that it had pulled the product and expressed regret over its failure to be, quote, more considerate of the symbol's hurtful connotations to so many people around the world. Moreover, a string of designers have come forward with evidence suggesting the company has a habit of creating knockoffs of others' works. The company has been accused of utilizing child labor, but Xi'an recently affirms on its websites that they never ever use illicit forms of labor, and they proactively campaign against unethical practices. For the time being, there's no evidence to confirm or deny the accusations about its labor choices. Since the pandemic, 
Offline retail giants like Zara were forced into a retreat, while online-only stores like Xi'an flourished. Through a combination of skillful advertising, low-cost shipping, and data-driven trend spotting, Xi'an aims to displace legacy retailers like Zara, H&M, and Uniqlo. But the company today remains a jumble of juxtapositions. It's controversial and innovative. It's mysterious and ubiquitous. So is Xi'an destined for greatness? We'll have to wait for more information to find out.